All right. Um, well, thank you, Peter, for having me again. We've been uh, we've been uh, together in many conferences on it, on uh, 3D printing and additive manufacturing before. Uh, it it uh, ranges from medical to uh, to just uh, normal 3D printing, additive manufacturing. Uh, and this one is uh, again a new angle. So thank you for inviting me. Um, well, if you go to this new slide, please. Um, this, uh, my, my talk will be a little bit, be a little bit about uh, legal aspects, and um, that's very frightening for, for guys who want to, uh, to get to move forward and find new solutions. Uh, legal aspects may be a little bit scary. So, well, that I will try to convince you that's not scary at all, but it can help you, um, you uh, to, to uh, more or less uh, secure your investments and your efforts to, to get to new solutions. New slide, please. They, what I will do is introduction, a brief introduction myself, and I uh, will discuss some opportunities and threats that will also um, include some of the items I've heard out of others present today. Um, um, I will discuss some legal issues and concentrate on IP and, and liability. And then I will have some takeaways for you. Okay. Next one, please. Um, well, who are we? Um, I am indeed, as Peter told you, I'm a, uh, the, one, uh, the founding father of this uh, law firm. That's the reason why it uh, coincidentally bears my name. It, it was founded in 2006 and uh, I've been around in 35 years, which is absolutely stunning years because uh, of the, all the technology developments over the years and we concentrate on, on the intersection of intellectual property and uh, and uh, and technology a lot. So that's where we are, and I have also been one of the uh, founders of uh, the Brainport Technology, uh, a Brainport Tech Law uh, uh, Association, which one of the partners in this conference. Next one, please. Well, the 3D printing is all around, and it's quite game changer. It's game changer for for product manufacturing. For pro of course, it started all with uh, prototyping, but it has uh, become it is really becoming mainstream right nowadays. There's a lot going on in Eindhoven, where I am based in the Eindhoven region. We have uh, we have a lot of um, a lot of uh, areas uh, where uh, 3D printing is really moving in. Actually, if I look out of the window, I'm, I'm looking at uh, additive industries. They're now my neighbors in this area. So that's it's all around us. Next one, please. Since you are in the area of electronic printing, I will not linger on, on the benefits and uh, the maybe also some down downsides of, uh, of 3D printing electronics. You know that much better than I do, probably. But uh, just to, to summarize, to my understanding, it's, uh, it, it provides you faster time to market, uh, greater, much greater design freedom and customization possibilities. The cost possibility combine certain uh, electronics into hardware uh, and, of course, easier production, especially on the on the, well, example given printed circuit of course. And innovation, it gives you great opportunities. Uh, the components you can uh, print on, on, on flexible surfaces, uh, etc. So, next one, please. But there are some uh, threats from a legal point of view. One of the main things is that they, uh, it all comes with digital files, and digital files are easy to copy, easy to, to spread around. Uh, you can easily uh, spread around a, a digital CAD model and a design file or print file, which, which gives the possibility that you design something here and you, you spread it around, or someone takes it and uh, sends it over to China or whatever, you, uh, and there they start to, to, to print your design which is not really the idea you had. So there, there are some of these IP challenges and, and actually it makes it a lot easier to, 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 uh, to infringe IP by spreading around this file and then starting to print a product with it. But there are some other challenges as well. I heard the first speaker was about uh, was talking about uh, sustainability. And I think, to my understanding at least, as, as, a, as a, someone who is not in this industry itself, uh, I, to my understanding, circularity is an issue, and uh, the structural integrity and delamination can be an, can be an issue in electronic printing in some cases and under certain stress stress conditions. Okay. So that brings 
Well, the, in general, uh, not only in uh, 3D electronics printing, but also in other areas, 3D printing and additive manufacturing brings a lot of legal challenges. We not, will not, by far not, be able to discuss all these challenges today, of course not, because otherwise you will be having me uh, all night, so it's probably too much for you to bear. Um, there are some items that we will discuss, which is IP and, uh, and uh, liability. But it's quite interesting, for instance, supply chain, if you look at, uh, especially hardware, if you look at the roles, the traditional roles of industry are really changing. Some, some of the uh, industries and, and intermediaries can be, can be skipped and is easy because of the, the, the file you need to, to, pre to, to prepare and to, to manufacture uh, a product through 3D printing or additive manufacturing can make it unnecessary to have this intermediate rule. So it may have quite considerable consequences for the industry itself. Next one, please. But what we will focus on intellectual property and liability. Um, I will go over this, um, so we'll find that later. Next one, please. So let me first explain a little bit about intellectual property. Uh, intellectual property is sort of uh, in the core of this of this picture of this uh, sort of uh, well mind map or map um, the core is real intellectual property intellectual assets is much broader it does contain intellectual property itself the, in, in, in the strictest sense but it also uh, encompasses all kinds of best practices mm. codes of conduct know-how uh, innovation but all the things that are listed there uh, you can see that as sort of intellectual assets of a company uh, who, who, who have, need that to, to, to get to innovation. And then you have the core of this, which is, which is intellectual property in the strictest sense. And that intellectual property comes into being either by rule of law automatically, for instance, copyright, database rights, but also uh, chips protection which I'll come back to a little bit later, but and other uh, rights come into exist, is the existence through registration, like patents, trademarks, designs, patent plant readers' rights, all that. So that must be bear, bear must, you must bear in mind that sometimes you have to register to get this this uh, this right. Next one, please. So what is what is this intellectual property? It, it's like this this uh, this robot model, which is a, which is an invention of the to Antov, to my understanding, um, Pepper, and it's in, uh, uh, for healthcare purposes. It, uh, it's in, designed to to do some some tasks and to to help out. Um, this may have a certain legal aspects. One is, for instance, the copyright on the software, which, in the, which is uh, in, embedded in the, in the robot itself. Pepper is no doubt registered as a trademark. There can be a design right on the whole model. You ha can have topography of the rights on chips, and there's topography rights uh, on the mark work of, of the chip. And uh, copyright the shape, you can have a patent and then finally you can have some secret know-how you would like to keep secret by not disclosing it to anyone else. Next one. So, well, in, in, in the, the basis, a concept or an idea or a format, a trade secret is free and can be applied by everyone, unless it's patented or a, a patent has been applied, uh, so it's patent pending, then you can no longer use it freely. Um, and it may be pet copyright protected, but a copyright only emerges once it is sufficiently perceptible by, by human, human mind. You can see it, feel it, taste it, whatever. So then it may be copyright protected, that it must be original creation by, by a person. They have the trade secret that can be, can provide you some protection under a European trade secret laws. Which are embedded are, are embedded is wrong word, but implemented in the in the national laws of the member states of the European Union. The United States already has uh, similar legislation for a long time. But don't forget that you need, in many cases, you need an NDA. So um, we'll come back to that word NDA with this uh, with this exclamation mark. I think a, a couple of times further because it's extremely imp important if you are in a development project. Don't give away your information too easily. And if you 
and if you engage with the partner, please do think of uh, entering into an MBA together with your partner. Next one, please. So why would you bother about the IP protection? It gives you a, a return on investment, a, secure, uh, a secured return on investment and a head start uh, over your competition. It makes you, it makes it able, makes you a, a, able to, uh, to have an understood exploitation for a number of years and freedom to operate. It, it, well, it, and of course it also creates value. Let's be honest. I mean, it's, it's not all about just about the fun, inventing things. It's also about money. It's about failure. It's about funding. You can easily uh, get funding if you have IP assets. So it's it's not not really uh, it's not really for nothing that you would would seek uh, IP protection. Uh, but then, if you have IP protection, you still have uh, need funds and need uh, the energy <laughs> to enforce and litigate. That's the reason why I added, but pick your battles. Don't go after anyone, everyone, but do, well, do go after them if, if it's really serious business. But the downside of patent, if we concentrate on that, which is most, most likely, most of the cases in your case, are patents. And the downside of a patent is that it becomes public. You have to, to public your patent. It will be patented. Uh, I mean, sorry, it will be uh, public, published within 18 months, or after 18 months uh, upon publication. So then you will, Actually, you will tell your, your competitor how to do it. So that is the downside, the very important downside of a patent. Next one, please. And what is a patent? Well, you have the traditional ones like a machine, an old, an old machine I've depicted here, just, uh, just an example. But on the right, there's a mask layout, semiconductor device, a manufacturing method using the same. So that, that illustrates that there are quite some uh, patents around um, about uh, about uh, uh, semiconductors, and uh, that is alongside semiconductor protection, uh, chips protection that can be that can be alive alongside patent protection. So please keep that in mind. Next one, please. Ah, we have some some crazy uh, patents around. This one is too too good to be true. Would say, but it's it's there. It's somewhere hidden in the patent registers, and they're the most 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 crazy patents around. And the right one is, of course, of course, some, something else. It is about Samsung and Apple, who have been um, who have been uh, in a battle about their patents over and forth for many years, and and finally they they they, they found a settlement together, and they respected and exchanged their patents. And gave uh, gave each other a license, and that's also a way to settle disputes. That's also a reason, by the way, why many companies um, <clears throat> think that it's very important to have a large portfolio of patents, just for defense reasons. So that they can exchange uh, patents, uh, patent portfolio. So if you don't attack me, I won't attack you. Yeah? That's also one of the reasons they get a good uh, patent portfolio. Thank you. Next one. So what is a patent for? Uh, it's about an invention at one side or a method. So a method is a, is, is a sort of uh, a way of doing things. It's also a possibility to get a patent for that. In order to get a patent, you need an inventive step and you need novelty. And there we are again, the NDA. In the, in the, uh, before you file for a patent, you need to, to uh, work with NDAs to avoid novelty to be to be damaged. And if the novelty is no longer there, if you have disclosed it to the outside world, you're not you're no longer possible it's no longer possible to, to acquire a patent. So that that's the reason why the NDA is extremely important. That will if you have an NDA in place and someone in, uh, violates the, the NDA, you can still say, well, okay, the novelty is not damaged because I had this NDA in place and that's the reason why I can still file for a patent. Now you have prior art. If someone is 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 already applying this this method or this invention, you cannot you, you cannot uh, obtain a patent because it's already there. So it must be novel. Then you can have a sort of prior use public or private prior use public that will be prior art. Then, but you can have prior uh, private use, which which uh, which which prevents the the holder of a patent to to uh, to challenge. The use of another one who has used it priorly. So it's a little bit more complicated, but just for your, for your, just in the back of your mind, if someone already used it in a private way, you cannot challenge this party 
on the basis of your patent. But that, that's a very difficult basis to defend. Um, apart from novelty in a preventive step, it must also be applicable in the industry. So it must be uh, someone else must be able to, 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 to read the patent as it is filed and then say, okay, now I understand how I need to do this. And that's the reason why it needs to be applicable in the industry. Next one, please. Uh, a patent is uh, obtained through a national application and European application, which actually is a sort of bundle of national applications. But once you get the European application, you will continue in, in the member states of the European patent treaty. And you have the, the international application, which is just also a bundle of patents, which you choose. I want to have this patent for Japan, for Korea, for uh, for China, for for the European uh, countries, for or maybe only for the Netherlands or Germany and the United States, something like that. In principle, it lasts for twenty years after the application. It's important to know. Yeah. Then we have next to the uh, patents, we have this is a very a little bit of, a, of an obsolete legislation. It's not fair, used very often. There is protection of topography of civic semiconductors. Um, and how and when does it, uh, does it come to, into being? Uh, well, it's, it's what, what's about is it's about an original layout design of an integrated circuit. And what is it original if it's, uh, if it's the result of creators own intellectual prop, uh, effort and not commonplace, it's not already around among creators of layout designs and manufacturers of integrated circuits. So it must be something also more or less new. It must be original, it must be a, an intellectual effort. Um, and then it provides you with an exclusive right, to, just like patents, an exclusive right to prevent uh, or stop others from using these, uh, these protected layout designs. It's an important basis, but on the other hand, one way or the other, it's not, a, not, not used very often. It's more or less obsolete. But just keep it in mind. And how will you get this protection? It's about the creation, registration, or commercial exploitation. And in the Netherlands, uh, registration is required for enforcement. So you, if you could get to the new slide, please. Um, because, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> it's under the TRIPS Treaty. A TRIPS Treaty is an international treaty uh, which um, has a lot of uh, arrangements uh, for intellectual property. Um, and in, under this TRIPS Treaty, amongst others, topography of semantical discourse is, is uh, addressed. And that paragraph says that, that, that all member states to the TRIPS, uh, TRIPS Treaty must provide 10 years, at least 10 years of protection from the filing. Uh, of, of the, the application for registration uh, of integrated circuits. Eh? So it's 10 years from filing the application for registration or 10 years from the first commercial exploitation. So if you don't file an application, but you start commercially exploiting it, you have 10 years, uh, 10 years protection. In the Netherlands, it's 10 years after registration or first uh, commercial exploitation, whichever is earlier, and the 15 years after creation, uh, which is if it's not registered or exploited, but then you have a very strange thing: the right, the intellectual property right lapses if you if you have not registered within two years after the first commercial exploitation. So it's it's a very strange sort of legislation. You have it, but if you don't register, you lose it very quick. In principle, the registration is public, uh, but. You can apply for for keeping uh, keeping certain parts covered as uh, you trade secrets. So that's that's very important to do, of course. Um, and regardless of its registration, regardless of its right, the uh, possibility remains open to reverse engineer topographies for retrieving the ideas applied by the inventor, which is more or less like copyright. You can under copyright laws. You can also reverse engineer software to find out what thoughts are behind the software and uh, to see how you can, in another way, achieve the same result. You cannot copy the source code, but you can, uh, you can build on and try to reconstruct or rebuild the software on your, with your own code. You have two minutes left. Uh, okay. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So that's, um, let me just uh, go further then. Let's just skip this one just a little bit. 
So what I would like to do is to, to say a, bit, a few things about uh, the elements in the process of printing. This is about hardware, IP, next one please. And just flip through it. It's about software, open course. It's of course it's open source, open or closed print design file. Would you like it to keep it yourself? Is the output infringing? Which this one is of course very important. But at, at the right hand side, that's actually uh, the the way you could break down uh, possibly infringing uh, board uh, or or circuit circuit to see what kind of elements are infringing. You, so you break it down in parts. And next one, please. Um, and well, the the the, the point uh, to to figure out whether the output IP is uh, the output is infringing or not is about the layout. The idea behind the electronic products, in principle, is not covered unless there is a patent. Um, and then you have the embedded software code, probably. Um, but other appearance is for not very likely. Next one, please. So. To, well, briefly, uh, it's the biggest IP threat in 3D printing overall is less control over IP because there's no there's no tangible thing anymore. It's it's intangible uh, digital design files. There are many copycats around. It's easier to infringe. Uh, exposure is bigger, and the enforcement is difficult. Next one, please. So the enforcement is difficult because of the fact mainly that it is it's from national law. Um, so you have to 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 go after infringers uh, country by country. Next one, please. I mentioned trade secrets. Uh, this is a little bit difficult to read, maybe, but I think you can figure it out. It only fits a little bit <laughs> in this slide, but you will get the slides afterwards. I I uh, uh, recommend you to read through this this slide because it gives you a sort of uh, decision tree. Um, what you should do under the trade secret protection laws, and this is based on the Dutch law, but this is not basically different than other European countries. The basic is that is you need to take decent measures to keep your trade secret uh, secret to benefit from trade, trade secret protection laws. So that's all for this. Um, the, well, very briefly on product liability. You can have um, electronic uh, uh, products which are printed uh, digitally uh, uh, through 3D printing, but then it can lead to, for instance, delamination or uh, not sufficient stress resistant uh, products. And then you could get the question who is liable if the product is uh, defective. Because the, the, there is uh, European legislation also about the, uh, the product liability of the producer, and the producer is a very broad, broad uh, meaning. There, there can be multiple producers, so you can, as a, as a manufacturer of, a, of a, a, a electronic component, also become liable under this, uh, this product liability act. And as for non-conformity or defective products or lack of structural integrity or that, things like that. Of course, you still have limited warranties and the warranty provisions, and you may be liable also for recall, which is which is not a very attractive position to. Yeah, this one I would and recommend you to just as a giveaway take take home if you like. There's uh, some sort of menu you should uh, you should have a look at if you go into collaboration with someone. Uh, please take care that you you arrange your agreements properly, also provide for a good exit uh, strategy and make proper arrangements about uh, the uh, background and foreground IP. So the takeaways and the uh, the basic uh, message I would like to, kind of to give to, to bring across is do your homework uh, properly, spend some, some uh, budget on landscaping to print operates, <laughs> try, to find out whether there are patents around to avoid infringement. Uh, consider patent of, patents, chip protection, copyright, trade secrets yourself. Um, arrange decent contracts with your partners. Uh, your insurance can be very important, for instance, uh, for uh, recalls and all that. I try to limit your risks in, in, in designing a proper corporate structure by, by having different uh, corporate entities whereby you can just easily uh, limit your risks in, in a decent way. And the next one, please. And that's 
probably well that's actually my 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 main message do you know your risks uh, so do look before you leap but do leap and do go on with your innovation that is extremely important so uh, i wish you luck with that thank you very much Peter.